We're back inside of Vim to look at another Vim plugin, and the topic of today is lf.vim. So this is basically a wrapper around the lf terminal file manager to make it work really nicely inside of Vim. Now, as you can see, the colors are a little bit wonky. So if I go open it up over here, this is how it's supposed to look. This is how it looks here. Also, if you resize, it might uh, completely break. So don't resize while you've actually got that open. We'll bring that back open now. As you can see, this is very, very bright compared to the way it looks over here. So this is sort of dependent on whether you're running Vim in true color mode or not, how your Vim color scheme actually works, whether you're using Vim or NeoVim and the way that they actually handle their terminals. But it works well enough that it's not really that big of a deal. So right now I just ran the LF command. So LF basically is the basic command which brings it open, takes you directly to whatever file you were just selected on. So in this case, I was just looking at my bash profile. And if we want to switch over to another file, like say my zshmf, all we have to do is open up a file like I normally would inside of LF by pressing L and we switch over to that file. Now there is another command called LF current file, but this one seems to basically do the exact same thing. I'm not really sure if they're supposed to be different because there's no documentation for this. So... I'm sort of just experimenting with it and guessing what's actually happening. Now, seeing as though this is just a wrapper around LF to make it run nicely inside of the Vim terminal, all your regular LF configuration, LF bindings still work just fine in here. So if I wanted to say jump to a folder, jump to a different folder, all of those still work as I'd expect them to. And that's sort of one of the reasons why you might want to use this, but I'll talk more about that in just a bit. Onto the next command, we have LF current directory. So this will look very similar to the way the LF current file works, but instead of jumping you directly to the file, it will just jump you to the top of the folder. But we also have LF working directory. Now this one doesn't seem like it does anything different if you just run it normally, but if we go and say CD into a different directory, let's say we CD into my music directory, and then we try running that one again, now it will actually open up in that directory. So working directory is wherever you're CD'd into and current directory is based on whatever file you currently have open. We also have tab variants of all of those commands as well. So we have LF new tab and LF current file new tab. Once again, I don't see a difference between the two of them. So we'll just run LF new tab and let's say we open up our bash profile. That will open it up inside of a new tab rather than being inside of the same buffer we were just in. So let's quit out of that one. And now we're back to the original buffer. There is also a LF current directory new tab as well, which does the pretty much the same thing as the previous current directory, but will open up in a new tab instead. And the same for the working directory option as well. So working directory new tab, which will open up from the working directory. And then basically whatever file you open up will be opened up in a new tab. In your vimrc or your init.vim, you can also go and set this option as well. So g colon lf underscore open underscore new underscore tab and then set it to one and that will mean that everything that you open up will be opened up in a new tab but this option has actually been deprecated so it will still work for now but it will probably be removed in a later update and the last three commands we have are the existing or new tab commands. so basically if we go and run lf current file existing or new tab what this is going to do is either switch to the tab that has that file open or actually make a new tab so for example let's say we open up the bash profile here and then we go and run that command again and this time we go and select the zshmf this time it's actually going to switch back to that file so as we can see we've gone and changed tabs so there's also a this is really long lf current directory existing or new tab and there's an lf working directory existing or new tab as well which do basically the same thing that we saw before but this time work with an existing or new tab by default if you press leader f it will open up lf inside of vim but if you want to get rid of that behavior you can go and set this variable right here so lf underscore map underscore keys now this second one actually is kind of interesting so if you didn't know when you open up uh, a directory inside of vim or neo vim it will actually open up inside of the built-in file tree inside of those editors so this is my home directory opened up inside of netru if you want to hijack that behavior and make it so that gets opened up inside of lf basically set this variable right here to one so if we try this again as we can see that's going to now run lf whether you want this behavior or not is sort of going to be up to you. 
I typically don't open up directories inside of Vim anyway, but if that's something that you do, maybe you wanna consider doing this. If you need to override the basic LF command, so you wanna pass in, say, some options to LF, you can use this command right here. So LF underscore command underscore override, and this is going to run the set hidden command inside of LF. Typically, you're probably not going to have to do this because most of these settings can be set inside of the LF configuration anyway. But if there's something specific you want for this version of LF, this option is here for you to do. Now, if you're using fish, you might actually have some issues with using this. But if you go and put this at the bottom of your VimRC, so set shell equals bash, that should go and address the problem. Basically, it's a problem with LF not really working perfectly with fish. Now, I'm probably going to be sticking with my Vim file tree, but there are still some benefits you can get from this. So if we go into LF again, as I mentioned earlier, all your regular bindings still work in here. So if you've got bindings for doing jumping, they will work. Or if you've got binding for, say, chmodding a file or making files or making directories or doing git things or basically anything that you'd normally want to do from a file manager, all of that will still work here. So you're not really limited by what a Vim file tree lets you do. Anything you are already doing in LF is just going to now work perfectly fine inside of Vim. And also, unlike working with a file tree, let's say you found a file tree that did everything you wanted it to do. You either would have to rebind everything or relearn a bunch of key bindings, which I would say the first option is probably preferable, but it is a lot of work to actually go and fix all of that stuff up. And because this is an interface you're already familiar with, there's no need to actually learn where anything is placed. You already know this is how LF actually works. But you may have noticed one missing feature when I went through all of the commands, and that was splits. Now, this is the basically the, the major reason I'm not going to be using this. I pretty much exclusively work with splits, so if it does not have split support, I simply cannot use it. Obviously, I could start working with tabs and integrating them into my workflow, but even if I start using tabs more often, I still want to be able to have splits inside of those tabs. I could keep around my file tree to also do that, but then I might as well just use the file tree for everything. So for me, I'm not going to be using this, but it might still be useful for you. However, there is no documentation for it. Now, if you go over to the GitHub page, there's like a little bit that tells you here are the commands that exist, but it's not like, okay, here is the regular sort of documentation you'd expect to see from a Vim plugin. None of that's actually there. You sort of have to guess what the plugins actually do. And that's why I couldn't work out what the difference between LF and LF current file is. If there's a difference, I would like to know, but I haven't actually been able to experiment and see one. And just one extra little problem is that if you're using NeoVim like I am, you actually have to install an extra plugin to get this to work, and that is this one right here, bclose.vim. This basically makes it so when you close LF, it just properly opens the file and properly closes the terminal without actually breaking anything. And that's just due to the differences between the regular Vim and the Neo Vim terminal. So if you want to use this, go right ahead. But for me, I'm going to be sticking with my Vim file tree because fern.vim and coc, they are both way better solutions and I'm, I'm quite happy using them. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, the Road, Brennan, Donald, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below to my Subscribestar, Patreon, LibrePay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and this channel available on library, odyssey, bitchu, bitchu, and all of that sort of stuff if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.